Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, I want to do an update on the whole Jay-Z situation, and I know it's causing a lot of drama, but Jay-Z is steadily getting exposed every day, okay? So what's going down is that yesterday I had posted an Instagram video of Faze on Love. Y'all know him, Big Worm, a.k.a. Big Perm from Friday, okay? What's up, Big Worm? How much you got left? Man, I got a lot. You still ain't sold that weed smoking? So basically he was going in on Jay-Z, you know, he's like, y'all act like this dude is our Lord and Savior, where's Solange, like he was going off. Go ahead and check out his video and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. i like to start today off with a prayer to our Lord and Savior Jay-Z. Thank you for being the nigga um, spokesman, oh Lord. When the fuck did Jay-Z become spokesman for niggas? All niggas. I mean, is, he, is, is this is serious? We over it when you get a new job, nigga? Are you going to split that check? Solange. Where the fuck is Solange? Solange. Activate Solange. Solange. Activate. A real spit though. How, how how's it over when you say it's over, nigga? Really? That was a jigger move, not a jigger move, a jigger house jigger. All right, you guys just saw what Faze I'm Love had to say. So that video went viral yesterday, but what a lot of people don't know is that a lot of people in the industry have also been throwing a lot of shade at Jay-Z for his moves. So if you guys don't know, Wale and J. Cole, they both posted videos of Colin Kaepernick basically saying, we ain't forgot, NFL let the man work. So this is what was posted on J. Cole and Wale's Instagram, basically, you know, throwing a little bit of shade at Jay-Z. So if that's not crazy enough, Nas's own company called Mass Appeal, they sent out this tweet. A lot of people are taking this as Nas shading Jay-Z. So the tweet goes, keep integrity at all costs at Nas. So basically Nas owns Mass Appeal Records and they're saying like, you know, don't make the moves that Jay-Z made. So like I said, a lot of folks are giving Jay-Z the side eye. Now what's even more crazy is that his own protege, Miss Rihanna, Rivi, is also not happy with Jay-Z. So what went down is that basically Sean King had posted this post and um, Rihanna was caught liking it, okay? So Sean King says, Jay-Z was wrong. Click the link in my bio for today's episode of The Breakdown where I unpack the pain and problems of what Jay-Z just did in striking a deal with the NFL, one that he spent a year building while they actively prevent at Kaepernick 7 from being able to play another game. Let me tell you two things. If you actively banned a friend of mine from working for three years and continue to do so, we can't be friends. We damn sure can't laugh and be buddies. Secondly, Jay-Z was working on this deal for a year. They flew out and met each other over and over again. It's why they look like they're besties here. And in that year, Jay-Z talked to Colin repeatedly. He never mentioned this deal in the works because he knew it was shady. He knew it was wrong. Anyways, listen to today's episode. So that's what he wrote on his Instagram. As you see, bad gal Riri, she went ahead and she liked that. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys a video from Sean's um, podcast. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Hey, good morning, everybody. As you may have seen or heard, Yesterday, the NFL announced a wide-ranging partnership with Jay-Z and his company, Rock Nation. Now, I'm just going to be completely raw and open about my feelings on this deal. I'm deeply disappointed. I'm deeply disappointed in Jay-Z. I'm deeply disappointed that he formed this partnership with the NFL. I'm deeply disappointed that, he learned, that we learned that he has been privately negotiating this partnership for over a year without ever mentioning a word about the deal to Colin Kaepernick, even though they spoke countless times over the past year. 
I'm deeply disappointed at several things that Jay-Z said in his press conference with NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell yesterday. And I'm definitely disappointed in several things that Jay-Z has said in multiple, multiple media interviews. And here's what I know. In our community, we have sacred figures who've grown so loved and so admired that you don't dare critique them publicly, even if it's warranted. In our community, we have some people who are so revered that sometimes we are blinded even to their biggest mistakes. The Obamas are on that level. Oprah is on that level. I think Jay-Z and Beyonce are probably on that level now, such that even if they make a real mistake, it's hard for people to see it. It's definitely hard to criticize them because of just how much people love them. And I think that's where we are right now. But I, I have to say what I have to say, first and foremost, as a personal friend of Colin Kaepernick, as someone who advised him and spoke with him often while he was taking a knee, but I also have to say what I have to say as a historian and as someone who understands the historical significance of what Colin Kaepernick has done and the price he's still paying for it at this very moment. So I'm just going to put all my cards on the table. Colin Kaepernick is in the prime of his physical life and has had his career stolen from him by the NFL. Not a single NFL player, not one, believes that Colin Kaepernick is out of the league for football reasons. The league has over 100 quarterbacks. Half of them are older than him. Two-thirds of them have never won a playoff game. 90% of them have never been to a Pro Bowl. Over 95% of them have never taken their team to the Super Bowl. And Colin has done all of those things. He has records in the NFL that stand to this day. It's not just that the NFL banned him once from the league. The NFL is actively banning this man from the league right now. There are teams that need him right now, but not a single one of them will cross that line to do so. He is a kind, soft-spoken, compassionate man. He has never been in trouble a day in his life. He's brilliantly smart, and I don't just say that as a friend. His score on the Wonderlick test for NFL quarterbacks was the highest of his draft. His grades were strong enough to get into Harvard and Yale. He got offers to attend the Ivy League. The man was literally going to grad school in his spare time while he was in the NFL, and yet he's still banned. And I can't get past it. You cannot actively ban the most courageous athlete of our generation from the league while simultaneously saying that you care about social justice or that you care about police brutality and mass incarceration. You can't actively ban the man who sparked this conversation in the NFL in the first place, ban him from ban him basically for sparking the conversation and say that you now want to continue the conversation, but without him, while you continue to penalize him for sparking it. Yesterday was actually the three year anniversary of the first day that Colin Kaepernick took a knee in the NFL. And for the NFL to make this announcement on that day that they are now forming a new partnership with Jay Z to me is disgusting. And here's the thing. And I said that I was going to be real. If you are my friend, my true friend, I can't be friends with somebody who has done you all the way dirty. I can't be friends with somebody who literally stole your career. If you're my friend, I can't be friends with somebody who is actively doing you wrong. And if you saw the press conference yesterday, Jay-Z and Roger Goodell, look like old buddies. They loved each other. We learned this morning that they've met at least five times over the past year about this, regularly flying out to meet one one another over and over again. This wasn't a deal that was made last week or last month. The New York Times reported today they've been working on the deal for over a year. And I'll close with this thought. I was particularly disgusted to hear Jay-Z say one thing. He said in an interview yesterday, we're past kneeling. First of all, Jay-Z, You've never kneeled. Mm. And saying that we're past it is a slap in the face of brave men like Kenny Stills of the Dolphins and Eric Reed of the Panthers who are still kneeling. They're not past it. So how are you past it? But here's the deal. If any of this really surprises you about Jay-Z, then you haven't been listening to his music. 
He's a capitalist above all else. He's about profit above all else. And so this hurts, but it's not surprising. This is who he is. What, Take did, care, everybody. what did he say? He said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. Yeah, that's who he is. I was disappointed and, that Colin Kaepernick settled on that collusion case because I wanted that thing to go to court to, to show everybody how they colluded to keep him out of the NFL, and they settled. Yeah. I mean, it, listen, I, I think the whole thing is complex. There, You know, I spoke to several people who were there at the press conference yesterday, and many of them said that Jay-Z seemed earnest and sincere about wanting to push for social justice. I don't deny that. I don't. And I like many of the things that he's done, and I've supported some of those things. I've appeared in his documentaries. But here's the thing. You, you can't make a deal on social justice with somebody while they are actively penalizing the primary person that started the conversation, particularly if you call that person your friend. That's not a good deal. Two questions. When he made that statement, did it mean that we're past kneeling like we have to do something else? One question. And the second question is, is this a way that Jay-Z feels that he's going to be able to help Change Colin? from within? And help Colin. I, I And I'm not answering for Sean, but I, I think it's just very interesting the fact that many people are saying that he, he's lied about even talking to Colin about this. Wow. Say, having said he that, was he dis- had a conversation. He was dishonest about it. You know, he had not talked to Colin about this deal in any shape, form, or fashion. And... Later, he said, oh, I just meant I had talked to Colin Kaepernick, like, in general. But he had never mentioned this deal to Colin, not once. But And that makes me suspicious about any conversation about working within uh, to, to, yeah. in order to affect change, Kim. If Jay-Z felt good about this deal, he'd have talked to Colin Kaepernick about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, so you guys just saw that video from Sean's podcast. Now, this is the last thing that has me giving Jay-Z a serious side eye. Now, I had pointed out the other day when he first did that news conference interview, I pointed out how much he was stuttering and how I was basically paying attention to his body language. We were talking about this on Instagram. A lot of y'all were saying I was reaching, oh, you know, just see what he's going to do, give him a chance. But I'm like, Jay-Z is a very articulate guy. When he's passionate about a particular subject, He's chest out, sitting straight up, no stuttering. I've never seen Jay-Z just carry himself like this. And that's because he knows deep down inside, this deal is shady and more shit's going to come out. Um, okay, I think we've passed kneeling. Yeah, I think it's time to go into uh, actionable items. I think everyone knows what the issue is. And we... <laughs> We're done with that. We, 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 everyone knows what the, we, you know what the issue is? You know why we were kneeling? Okay, do you know the issue? Yeah, yeah. do you know the issue? <laughs> yes, we all know the issue now. Okay, next, what are we moving on next? And I'm not, again, so to be clear, for the room, I'm not minimizing that part of it because that has to happen. That's a necessary part of the process. But now we all know what's going on. What are we going to do? How are we going to stop? Because the kneeling was not about a job. It was about injustice. Let me bring attention to injustice. Everyone's saying, how are you going forward? And Cap doesn't have a job. This wasn't about him having a job. Well, more shit is coming out. So if you guys do not know, Brian Michael Cox, who is a huge uh, songwriter in the industry, he does a lot of stuff behind the scenes, very outspoken. Now he's calling out Jay-Z. Because what a lot of people forget, you know, social media has a short ass memory span. Um, Jermaine Dupri was asked to do an NFL deal during the time when all this popped off when they were out here in Minneapolis. Jermaine Dupri was asked. Uh, he was asked to, you know, do the Super Bowl halftime show, all that stuff, you know, basically put together like, um, you know, artists to come and perform. I don't know if he's going to bring the so so deaf people. I'm not sure. But now it's coming out that Jay Z personally called Jermaine and told Jermaine to not take that deal. The same exact deal that Jay Z just signed with the NFL. So you see, everything you do in the dark eventually comes to light. That's why I've been side eyeing this whole deal. You know, folks been coming for me. It is what it is. I'm entitled to my opinion. <music> Thank you.
But uh, Brian Michael Cox just spilt the damn tea. So it was hard for me to get this damn podcast. I had to go through a lot to get it. But I was able to grab the clip. Y'all go ahead and listen to this. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Not like watching the NFL. I, I was never going to not boycott the NFL. Because I, I, I hearken to the fact that all the flack that JD got for the Super Bowl. But Jay, Jay-Z does this and now it's like. That, that's, that's my number one thing also too. Yeah. I mean, Jay-Z went hard. He yeah. went hard against like, like fuck the NFL. I don't need them. He went hard you know, and, on the song. I'm saying no. I mean, yeah. I'm talking behind closed doors too. Like yeah. he wasn't. He wasn't. Like he made it clear that that was not what he was fucking. I mean, my my personal opinion is this: there's a lot of things that's going to be unearthed because of this. You know, yeah. like the fact that the, how the Barclays got into Brooklyn and what was promised. That just looks. And, that looks. Uh, that's that, that's a that's a crazy look. And Dale yeah, and Jay Z. Yeah. Um, but I, um, and then you know, and then, and then the fact that Colin Kaepernick is not involved with this social justice thing that he's doing, like that, for me, it would have yeah. been like, yo, I'm gonna go get Colin and Eric Reed to be a part of this, and then we'll go like, if it wasn't about money or cap or being a capitalist, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's my thing. It's like, and also Live Nation, the, 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 there's a bigger play here. Right. right? I there's think it's bigger, owner. I think it's yeah, ownership. The, no, but it's just a bigger player, period. Mm-hmm. You know, Jay-Z's on a contract with Live Nation, man. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what's real. You know what I mean? He's a billionaire, but he's still on a contract. You know what I mean? Right. Live Nation handles all the, you know, all the fucking venue shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you can't tell me that somebody was like, yo, like, this is what we're doing. You know, we <laughs> like, this is what's happening. Right. You're going to make a lot of money, but this is what's happening. And you're going to do it because, it, you know, we advanced you this amount of money. Right. You owe us boom, boom, boom. You know right. what I mean? Like, we never know what the outside, what the underlying business... Now, here's it. It could be... It could... It, you know, I'm not saying that they can't turn it to some good shit. You know what I mean? Right. But for me, I just feel like the kind of flack... We, all talk, we also talking about a guy who, who single-handedly called... He picked up the phone and called Jermaine to tell him not to do it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're talking, we're talking about a man a year ago, not even a year ago, picked <laughs> up the phone. It's the same program. We, when we all went to the fucking... Um, we all had that meeting. Yeah. The, the NFL. NFL. Yeah. All that shit was a part of the same. It was the same shit. Social justice. Right. It was the same exact shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? For me. I didn't know that. It was the same exact shit. So for me, I'm like, and I wanted to make sure it was clear before I even spoke on it. You know what I mean? Right. I was like, is this the same shit? And I went down and I did my research and I, you know, and I, you know, I, I called the person who invited me to the NFL thing last year. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and it was like, oh, same shit. I said, well, send me the information. It's, it, it's literally the same exact shit. The only difference is what Jay Z's doing is he's doing the actual Super Bowl halftime. Well, he's yeah, he's gonna help produce it's the a, Super Bowl he, show. He's and gonna do the other shit too. He's gonna counsel them yeah. in social justice yeah. in a campaign. It's yeah. called, uh, I think it's. Uh, I want to make sure it's called what they call it. Um, Inspire Change. What is it yeah. called? I think yeah. He's gonna consult. Consult on entertainment, including the Super Bowl halftime show, and contribute to the league's activism campaign, Inspire Change. Yeah, so here's the deal. Like I said, I mean, I'm, I have to see what, how it, you know, how, how it unravels. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to, I'm not going to condemn it or be like, you know what I mean? Or oh, that shit's whack. I mean, I'm not going to do that. You know, there are people who are vocal about it and going crazy about it. But for me, I want to look at it intelligently and because I know a lot of what was happening before mm-hmm. and how, 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 we were to how we were engaged last year as a as a community. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I, you know, if you knew that, why would you pick up the phone and call? You know what I'm saying? You, you, you knew that me. about a year ago. You think you knew? No, I'm, I'm talking about you know. I I I I, I don't even sound like I'm, de- I'm defending JD, but I'm just saying like at the end of the day, I didn't have an took, issue with none of that shit. He took a a, a beating, a beating, right? For the, doing the same shit, right? He took a beating, and I guarantee you, they not, they they didn't pay him as much as they about to pay dude. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know I mean, so it's like maybe maybe my my takeaway from this is maybe maybe the NFL and and this is what I I will say about um the cap and Eric Reed needs to be a part of the social injustice that's, program. That, that's, that's what I'm my, saying. To me, it's not genuine unless until they, you unless talk to the people that who, started it. who started it. Right. That's my problem with yeah. it. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure there had to be, if there hasn't been a Cap call. Go they, check, nigga, they, go, no, no, go check that Know Your Rights Twitter. Go check Cap's oh, Twitter. Oh, are they talk, talking? They're like, really? Eric wow. Reed talking. Eric Reed's like, yo, we, we weren't, we weren't, we were never asked. Like, I'm not fucking with that. 
Like you got that's that's the reason why I'm like, I looked at them like, oh, they should have been the ones that was the yeah. first people to go right, talk right, to. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Before anything, like, oh, NFL want to do this thing. Hey, Cap, Eric, we could do something. Let's make this shit happen. Yeah. That would have you know that would have had to be a condition, some sort of some sort of some some something to do with Cap. That we can get this thing back involved. And if even, I, if I, Exactly, be I'll be a part of it, but I mean, Cap got to be in on. I mean, it. fuck you, Cap getting a job. You know what I mean? It's not about the he just job. Be at in this on point, it. yeah, I'll do this, but I got to get Kaepernick and I got to get Eric Reed. He has the power to do that. Right. He didn't do it. Mind you, they right. say Eric Reed's been uh, a <laughs> randomly drugged three times, five, five, five times. times. Yeah. So how you? I was gonna ask you because the I know, season hasn't even started. I know how you feel Shut about. Shut the it. fuck up. Yeah. We're only two weeks in the preseason. Yeah, he said he said like three <laughs> random PG, yeah, performance enhancing drug tests or whatever. D tests already. Yeah. yeah. We're just in pre we're just in so, training camp. Let me, let me, so I, I was going to ask you how you feel about this because I know, you know, you weren't, but you didn't boycott the NFL either though. You weren't. Um, last year it was kind of just whatever to me. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of whatever. Last year it was kind of whatever to me. Really? It was cool because yeah. the, the Super Bowl was here. Right. But as far as like watching the game, like I didn't, have to watch the games. Did I go to? I think I did. No, I didn't boycott because I did go to. Yeah. I think I went to a Saints game, Fat Atlanta Falcons and Saints game. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't just watching every game. I just right. always try to go to the Saints and the Falcons game. Yeah, well, I mean, like, like, like I said, I feel like one thing that I know that brands are starting to listen to and do is they're really starting to listen to people that they feel affect the culture. It's all right, so you guys just saw that clip, and you guys just saw what um, Brian Michael Cox had to say. So, like I said, this entire situation is just really shady, okay? I'm sure Rihanna feels some type of way, because if you guys also remember, Rihanna was also asked to perform at the Super Bowl, but because of Cat being blackballed, she said that she wouldn't perform because she was standing alongside Jay-Z, only for her mentor to run off and sign a deal with the NFL. So, you know, the whole thing to me is just really, it's really unsettling. It's kind of crazy. And, you know, I did talk about Colin the other day because I feel like, you know, even though he was blackballed, he went through a lot. I, you know, he's not also innocent in this either because, again, he settled with the NFL. And y'all can say, well, he needed the money. What else was he supposed to do? I mean, at the end of the day, he took a check. He signed a non-disclosure, okay? So, basically, he made that struggle over himself. You get what I'm saying? So when he folded, that gave Jay-Z ample opportunity to be like, well, you're not fighting anymore. You're not kneeling anymore. So let me go on ahead and do me. So that's the point I was trying to make in the last video. You know, it's not so much that, that he didn't have the right to like sign off on it or, you know, get his money. I'm not saying that. But sometimes when you settle, these are the, some of the things that can happen. Because if you're not going to keep fighting, what is everybody else fighting for? You got your check, you got your payoff, and that's how Jay-Z's looking at it, like, well, damn, you're not kneeling, you're not fighting, so shit, let me go ahead and get this money. But the sad part is, I see a lot of greed, and it's really sad because greed is destroying a lot of people out here, okay? Jay-Z and Beyonce's net worth together is more than, you know, the combined wealth of some people in certain cities. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're rich. It's like they've built generational wealth for all three of their children. Or is it four? I forget. I think they got three. Yeah, they got the twins and Blue Ivy. Okay. Because I'm hearing rumors that she's pregnant again. All right. Three. They built more than enough generational wealth for their children. But for some reason, they just still feel the need like they have to have more money, more money, more money. Even to the detriment of other people. You know, even through shady business dealings. I mean, you could tell that Jay-Z and Roger uh, Goodell, they look like best friends. That was not their first interaction. You can tell this is not a deal that was just deals. Deal, if, if you know business, deals don't happen on the fly, especially when you're talking about millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? They don't happen on the fly. So he's been working on this. While he was telling everybody else to, you know, boycott the Super Bowl and stay away from there and, and blasting people like, you know, Big Boy and, and uh, Travis Scott and Shaman and Rihanna and all this other stuff, you know, affecting them from more publicity and getting their bag. The whole time he was on the back end working on a deal. He literally called JD and said, nah, don't take the deal. You know, you're better than that. Only for him to sign the same deal, not even a year later. If that ain't some shady mess, I don't know what is. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, Jay-Z's about his money. He's a businessman, literally. And Kaepernick, to me, is just way too silent. You know, um, 
since this whole thing has happened a few years ago, and y'all know I supported Cap. You know, I wasn't just making videos. I was buying his t-shirts. I was promoting his stuff. Go on his website, support his merchandise. I bought his merchandise for the boys. So I was supporting. I was putting my money where my mouth was, supporting his cause. But... You know, as the years gone on, like, I don't really see him speaking out like that. I mean, he has a lot of endorsement deals behind this. He's made his money, but he's not, like, really the voice. He lets other people, like, you know, Sean um, King be his voice and stuff like that. But he's not really out here preaching about injustice or solutions and things like that. So I think with this whole situation, the ball was just dropped. And it was dropped by a lot of people involved in the thick of the matter. And at this point, Jay-Z does not care. He's going to get his money. He's going to get his back. And the NFL wants to fix their reputation with people of color. So what better way than to hook up one of the biggest celebrity icons out there? And y'all can say, well, you need to give Jay-Z a chance, T. Give him a chance. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to own a team and this and that. And that's fine. But I know if this was Kanye West or somebody else that y'all deemed as a coon or whatever, y'all would be dragging them. But because it's Jay-Z, I'm supposed to, you know, I'm not supposed to say anything. I'm supposed to just give him a chance and, you know, hope he does something. Okay, well, y'all keep that same hope. You know, all that hope. <laughs> you know, let's hope Jay-Z does something. But yeah, y'all keep that same hope. Keep that same hope energy. Keep hope alive. You know, hopefully he does something. But, you know, the way it's looking, he's about himself. And, you know, I'm not surprised. It is what it is. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on these new revelations concerning King. <laughs> Jay-Z. Phase on Love blasting them. Nas and uh, J. Cole and Wale throwing some shade. Rihanna liking Sean King stuff, throwing shade at Jay-Z. But most importantly, Mr. Brian Michael Cox basically blasting Jay-Z for how he did J.D. behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.